What's up, everybody, and welcome to my SmackDown review. A very long four days of wrestling with WWE, and my God, let's say uh, what happened tonight on SmackDown. Um, you know, they talked about well, I guess now they have new. How can I say this? A new stage. Uh, well, both shows had a new stage, but Brooklyn, uh, you know, it's, I don't think it's gonna change next week and stuff, and. And everything. I, I don't think that that new stage for SmackDown will be long. But the wrestlers were in the ring. Well, well, the show pretty much started with uh, AJ Styles gloating over the John Cena win. And you got Ziggler's face calling him a loser and Ziggler got pissed. But Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon were in the ring. And we kind of start, started out with them talking about the new tag team and women's championships. Which, once again, the belts look the same, people. Okay? The belts look the fucking same. The only difference is that the tag team titles are blue, which makes sense because it's SmackDown. And have silver plates, you know, the Raw has the black and gold plates. And the Women's Championship is pretty much the same. With, except, you know, just the blue in the hand instead of red. So, the, the belts just, you know... They kind of look the same and stuff. And Slater came out, which kind of people were with him. He said he wanted a shot at the title. He said, well, you had a woman. And he said, well, I can find a partner for the tag team titles by the end of the night, he said. AJ Styles came out talking about, I'm tired of hearing about these titles. He said, I, I want to, I'm not going to be your partner, Heath. And Ziggler attacked him from behind until everybody started breaking it up then. They broke him up. As also the tag, there will be a tag team tournament to crown the new tag team championships at champions at Backlash, and there will be a new women's champion at Backlash. Alexa Bliss swinging into you know Becky Lynch and her new gear is cool. Uh, Becky won, got the disarmor. Natalia and Naomi were on commentary. Uh, nothing much, but Becky got the win, or you know 50-50 booking sometimes. Alexa gets the win, and Becky gets the win. Ascension went into Usos in the first round of tournament. Usos won. Pretty much, you know, squashed them. We, we knew the Usos were going to beat the Ascension. AJ Styles came out. Talking about John Cena. I beat John Cena. And I pinned him with a victory. And, you know, people like Ziggler are jealous in the back and everything. And he talked about the Cena fans are just going to, you know, cry to their beer, milk, or whatever. There aren't any John Cena fans anymore. There can only be AJ Styles fans, which people are chanting AJ Styles. Again, the phenomenal one is the TNA himself. And I should be the number one contender for the WWE Championship until Ziggler came out. The referees and Jamie Noble and Billy Kidman stopped them. And Daniel Bryan told everybody to stand down. You will be in a match. And it will be AJ versus Ziggler. If AJ wins, it will be him versus Ziggler. If Ziggler wins, it'll be a triple threat. I don't know. That doesn't make sense. Either way, AJ still wouldn't have been the match. If he loses, he's still in the match. It just makes a triple threat. Why if it is Ziggler wins, he just gets in the match? Why that? That makes no sense. Uh, Kurt Hawkins commercials, which is just really ridiculous sometimes. And stuff, so... I don't know. The facts he had was insane, but whatever. Carmella came out as Nikki Bella came yeah, into an interview. Her. An interview. With her, but Carmella attacked her from attack, attacked her from behind, and beat her up and hit her with the uh, X Factor or whatever face buster. And I guess they want to make Nikki face and Carmella heel, which I I've, I've stated this before. I'm not a fan of Bella's. I don't really like them that much. I think Nikki Bella's title reign was just a, some political bullshit just to get back at CM Punk and AJ. And I'm just not a fan of either of the two. I eat it too. I'm just, I'm just not a fan of the Bellas. I, I'm, I'm really not a fan of Nikki Bella, so I guess they wouldn't matter. Because one minute I say it's so Carmella's face, right? I'm on Carmella's side. I'm not on the Bellas side. I'm, I'm on Carmella's side. I'm just, I was never a fan of Bellas and everything. Because I, I just know how their political bullshit works and how they get these title wins and whatever. So uh, they want her to be face. I guess so be it. And Carmella heel, but. You know, at least I guess Carmella's different, you know, because she doesn't have Enzo and Cass around her. She doesn't have, uh, 
uh, Bailey around her, so she got to go on her own. Randy Orton, which I was surprised surprised to see here, but not John Cena, but I heard John Cena's over your you know, film before that show, uh, uh, that grit thing or something, American Grit. Orton came out, he's in a hell of a fight with Brock Lesnar. He was glad, you know, you know, he talked about Shane McMahon stepping in the ring, but Bray Wyatt sat out there. He sat out there and talked about Orton, saying like, man, you know, I'm a god and everything, and, you know. You're a man who hurts, who suffers and dies. And he said, you are not a god, because gods can never die. And he said, Orton, you know, don't worry and everything, but, you know, it's going to happen and stuff. And, <clears throat> and I guess it's now going to be Orton versus um, Bray Wyatt. They talked to Shane McMahon, and he said this thing with him and Lesnar is far from over and stuff with him. So I guess we will see Shane versus Brock. And they fined Brock Lesnar $500. Well, wow, yeah, fine him $500. You fuckers couldn't even suspend him from the whole, you know, drug and anti-doping. At least the, you know, the Nevada Athletic Commission has suspended the guy for about two years now. I don't know how many times you, I don't know how UFC is going to suspend him. Slater was talking to Arn Anderson in the back, which um, he didn't, he, uh, he was going to be his partner, but it wasn't his first choice until Rhino came from behind him. He said, you know what? I've been tag team champion before to make payments from an above ground pool, so it's like it's gonna be Heath Slater and Rhino now as a team. American Alpha went against Brazongo, which actually had a really good match. It actually make you know make them look somewhat credible for once. But American Alpha was winning, and they moved on in the tournament. Dean Ambrose was in the back, pretty much saying I've been drinking all day or what and gambling and stuff, and you know I gotta you know. Put some in my system and pretty much got some coffee and a Red Bull and moved on then because he's wearing a big 10 gallon hat and a Mohegan Sun t shirt. Some people could play, oh, so the WWE champion drinks on the job and gambles all day, huh? And they say he's supposed to be the face. And as we got into the main event, then AJ Styles went against Dolph Ziggler, which was actually a really better match than we saw Sunday from Ambrose and Ziggler. And AJ Styles got the win, and I guess Ziggler goes back to the bottom of the barrel again, that which. Just this whole Ziggler and Ambrose thing hasn't gone out well. So maybe the, the, uh, Zick, Dean Ambrose is still acting the same, and some are now agreeing with Austin's point, saying resting on his laurels now and stuff. But I think Ambrose will, you know, and Zick, and um, AJ Styles have a great match. And some people, and something that you know, Ambrose has to change to still being the same person. You know, I guess he was a patient in the match, but he was on commentary. But we will see what happens. But, you know, there's one more thing I want to address that has to do with the show. And I've been talking, I've been hearing about this last night about the promo or shoot between Daniel Bryan and and The Miz. And some took it, I think, it's a shoot or a work shoot, but it, it was one point where he didn't, Daniel Bryan said he didn't like Miz's champ, say he fights like a t coward, he wrestles as a coward. And I think that hurt Miz inside a little, but, and stuff. And he said, you're not a great champion and everything. He says, you know, when I came here, I was on the independent scene. I had to work the soft style of WWE. And he said, like, if I was to create a wrestler, you'd be a, a soft style wrestling and everything. I was more that hard hitting style. And I think, and, you know, Ambrose, uh, not Ambrose, but Miz, uh, like, he was pissed just pretty much talking about Daniel, saying, like, at least I'm here. I don't come, like, I don't wrestle, like, once a year uh, to one year to six months. I'm never hurt. You are. If you want to wrestle so bad, then why don't you quit and go back to the indie scene? And I'm thinking of shooting. The only thing I really thought was shoot when Brian says, I would come back if they let me back. But they won't let him back. You know, they won't let Daniel back. So in Daniel Bryan's mind, he knows he's not retired in his mind. They wanted him out. They they said he was retired. But, you know, Daniel Bryan's still out getting all these tests and everything. So he doesn't believe he's retired. And I'm looking at Miz was just pissed until Daniel, well, walk away, walk away, man. I'm out here, I'm out here all the time, I've been doing this over 10 years and everything, and, and, but Daniel was right about what he said about Miz, though, Miz sucks, and I still wonder why they chose Morrison, they chose him over Morrison, you know, this guy's had the WWE Champion and main event, but probably one of the worst WrestleManias ever, but when he said those different styles, I will say this, at least Miz has never been hurt for the longest time he's been here, Daniel Bryan has been hurt. And I'm looking this as a shoot or a work. Because it's either a shoot or this is probably the best promo Miz has ever cut in his career. Because he showed fire. He showed passion. 
and he looked like he was really pissed about it. About it. It's like, I'm here all the time. I'm out here all day, every day. I'm here every week. Where are you? And Daniel just walked off. I don't know if that those comments hurt him because, you know, he's still hurt. He can't wrestle right now. But we're going to see how this goes, really. I want to see where this goes, if it was a shoot or a work shoot or whatever. But, God, man, that was some, some facts they was stuck stating out there. These were like some straight up facts and everything. I just had to talk about that talking smack segment because I heard about it last night. I don't really watch it. I really have the network like that except I brought a pay-per-view or something. But I'm like, damn, I didn't know it was that heated. I think Miz was really heated when he heard that soft style wrestler and saying he wrestled like a cow. And I think he took that. I don't know if he took it seriously. It was in his feelings. I'm not sure if it was a work shoot. But God damn, if that was a work, I have to say that was probably the best promo Miz cutting years, but Daniel was right about the facts he said about, about Miz, he's, he's telling the truth, this is all true, what he said about Miz and everything, so, it's like everybody knows and stuff, so, what do you gotta say about that, but, I had to say that about SmackDown and everything, they put on, I just, I, and honestly, they put on a better show than Raw this week, they really did, not with SmackDown once again this week. But I'm out of here. We'll see you guys later. Peace. And they do a lot what they can with the, uh, the limited roster they have. But I'm out. See ya.